Right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from a lovely sunny San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined from Iowa. No, not Iowa, Idaho. Everybody <laughs> does it. <laughs> I can't believe I have it written down in front of me. <laughs> from Idaho by Kim Peterson Stone. How are you doing, Kim? Doing well, John. Doing well. Glad to be here. So I'm not going to make any more comments about the state because I'll probably get it wrong. I'll probably like say, oh, Idaho potatoes. No one knows where it is. <laughs> no one knows. They can't point it out on a map. We just kind of are, are floating around. We're actually, we're, we're, we're about 30 minutes for the, from the Oregon border. We're in oh, South, okay. we're about 45 minutes from Boise. So we've got mountains, rivers, all kinds of fun things here. Yeah, yeah. And I've actually been to Boise. So yeah, there you go. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, Kim uh, has an extensive experience and following of over 225,000 on LinkedIn and leads linkability.us, a firm that specializes in leveraging LinkedIn for professionals, companies from startups to Fortune 500s. At the core of your philosophy is a belief that personal connections drive business success. And through linkability, you offer tailored strategies uh, to help sales marketing, lead generation, thought leadership, employing advanced automation and AI integration to deliver measurable results. And that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about how LinkedIn can be and LinkedIn and Sales Navigator can be best leveraged today, uh, you know, by professionals. Because um, my, my experience with LinkedIn came just to give you a background goes back to, I think, very early on. I was I came onto LinkedIn platform in the early 2000s. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and over a period of I don't know how many years, probably up to the financial crisis, you used to get like a few link, a few requests, a few connections. You know, there was nothing. It was it was still very kind of, uh, you know, it was kind of very casual, if you like. Then we had the financial crisis came, and suddenly everybody piled onto LinkedIn because, and then you know through COVID and all of this, and then virtual and stuff. So LinkedIn has gone through these massive evolutions, but I feel like in some way, some people like yourself have figured out how to use it in a very effective way. And then a lot of other people have decided it's a new spam platform. <laughs> right. So, right. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. I, I, I too have been a long time uh, user of LinkedIn um, by way of actually having a failed entrepreneurial experience. I owned a medical device firm uh, that failed uh, due to a series of, of uh, catastrophic events that led to needing to build myself back up again. So I started writing about it and I started writing about it on LinkedIn prior to the Microsoft uh, purchase. Right. So LinkedIn at that point was very much encouraging, you know, oh my gosh, you're, you're writing things. People are responding. This is fantastic. Uh, editors reached out, hey, continue to write, you know, and that was the reason for uh, the followership build. So it's not mm -hmm. because I'm, I'm so brilliant, it's because timing. And so, we've been very good at seeing where things are going. So we, you know, we launched a newsletter before that was a thing. And so we have 45,000 followers on our newsletter. Um, and, and, and people wanted to know how, how do I do this for myself? And, and really when you look at LinkedIn, it's, it's like the Google for business and it's mm -hmm. not just generating leads, but it's, Hey, I need a partner. I need someone to mentor me. I need someone that might be interested in um, funding my new venture. Uh, perhaps I do need leads to sell a product, but when you are finding a person with a problem with the person who has the solution, that's phenomenal. And LinkedIn allows you to do that. Now, a lot of people do it incorrectly where they want to just blast everything to everyone. And I think that's what you're talking about in terms of the spam fest. And that is an absolute negative for sure. And, and LinkedIn is constantly fighting that war. But if you use it in a Titan laser focused way, it can be really excellent because the people who are looking to hire you as a speaker, like, gosh, I really need a speaker that's in this specific niche. You're not going to go to Google, right. you know, you're going to go to LinkedIn, right? So if you're, if you're properly position, positioning yourself for whatever it is, the objective that you have, it can be unbelievably powerful. And, and a lot of times people say, oh, I, I've got to do content. I've, I've got to do content. That's the big thing, right? Oh, let's just do a bunch of content. Well, if you don't have a network that's filled with mm -hmm. the people who are interested in what you have to say, you're kind of defeating your purpose. So yeah. there's a lot of misinformation out there about it as well, for sure. Yeah. 
Yeah, I um, I did a podcast in a couple of years ago, and uh, they had me on because I, I I had made the statement that if everybody's creating content, then who the heck is reading it? Um, yeah, and and I think that's the point. Is like people kind of got caught up in this thing. I've got to pump out content. Got to pump out content. Uh, without the thought. So tell me a little bit about that. what is a more elegant, a, a better way of viewing and approaching LinkedIn? Because I think the worst feature they ever brought out was the stupid auto, you know, whenever somebody sends you a connection request and you, oh, right. and, and it's lovely personalized and you think, oh, this person has put effort into it, this and then you hit accept and then you get boom, sales yeah. pitch. <laughs> right. Right. Which is the wrong way to do it. So mm -hmm. I, I think that we can all agree that email marketing can be effective. Commercial mm -hmm. marketing can be effective. Videos can be effective. All of those things can be effective, but not when they're just thrown out there. Right. So in terms of an elegant way to approach it, the first thing you really need to do is, is define what it is you're trying to accomplish. So if it's a job search, for example, you want to make sure that your profile is really tightened up. The keywords are where they need to be. You have a professional photo, you have a, a, a headline that tells people all about the value that you're bringing them right? Not all about you, 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 but how, how your, your benefit can, can, it, how your acumen in certain areas can benefit them. And then you're going to want to go above and beyond. You're not just going to want to, um, reply to an ad, uh, posting, but you're going to want to connect to the person that is posting, maybe connect to the people within that department. So you're using it as a more intelligent tool. That's on the job search side. On the business side, again, you want to make sure who, are the people that I serve? Who are the people whose problem I'm I'm solving? You know, am, am I saving them money? Am I saving them time? Am I am, am I um, giving them a platform to to enhance their careers? Whatever the, the the case may be, make sure you know who those people are, and then invite them to join your network. And if it's an automated type of situation, that message needs to lead with value. Let's connect. Hey, I'm so glad we're connected. By the way, this is what I do. If you ever have a need, let me know. The next one is, hey, here's an article you may find helpful. Hey, here's a link to a step-by-step -step checklist that our clients find really helpful. Give, 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 give. And give them an opportunity then to have a conversation or whatever the case may be. Give them the opportunity, right? Yes. So that changes the game entirely. And then you become someone who is like, oh, yeah, that's that one guy that was talking about, or that one woman that was talking about, um, you know, LinkedIn or, or, you know, processes or whatever it is, you then become a trusted advisor mm. and that can be done as well. And that is, that is what we specialize in because your LinkedIn, um, your persona online is very critical. You do not want to mess that up. Mm. And if you're just, randomly spamming people, you run a, a high risk of doing that. Yeah, no, and uh, absolutely. And I, th and I think uh, what you're talking about there, as you said, like is, is an elegant and it's a process that builds and, and, uh, and I guess the, the fundamental part is that it's thoughtful. You've thought out and it's intentional. And cause here's another thing that I often see is like people think they say, Oh, engage with other people's content. Right. So if you post something in our, and, 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 and people think that going great post is engaging. <laughs> when I see great post, I go, okay, so you never read anything I wrote. Right. Uh, that, that's, that's a sure sign. And if you said, oh, you, the comment you made about blah, 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 well, I, this and that, then I'm, then I feel like, oh, that person put in an effort. I feel like, wow, this is somebody maybe I actually want to interact with. So I think a lot of it has to do with being thoughtful and and intentional and as you said like trying to bring value not trying to find the latest shortcut yes definitely and and something that's really interesting over over the years that i've learned john and, and this may this may um help you think in terms of wow the stuff that i'm that i'm kicking out actually is making an impact even though it's not apparent on the surface is nine times out of ten when someone says hey i've been following you on linkedin for a while i've seen a couple of your videos i've seen your articles i've seen you know this that the other whatever um and and the other thing too let me just mention this really quickly is when you do have things off of linkedin you do a podcast interview you do whatever you want to do you want to put it onto linkedin in the mm -hmm. featured section or whatever but nine times out of ten when people come and approach there they already know me they already know the company they know everything about what we do and they've never made a comment ever, mm -hmm. never. 
I've never even, they're in my network. They're not on my radar at all. But the fact that we're kicking these things out and it's kind of sprinkled out like a, you know, spider web of sorts or little breadcrumbs leading them when they're ready, they will do that. So all of your body of work is, is online. And when people are searching or whatever, it can come up. So the, the, I often say, you know, like the, the, the presence on LinkedIn for me started on the feed. Right. And about four years ago, we went behind the feed. We do very little on the feed right mm -hmm. after this. I'm going to, um, right after, um, we meet, I'm going to uh, launch one of our newsletters. It's going to be a special edition. It's probably going to get about, I don't know, 4,500 views, maybe, maybe 25 comments, something like that. But that's not where the magic happens. The magic happens when it's, it's kind of fed out to the audience and there's this piece and that piece and that piece and that piece that leads to, wow, this person really knows what they're doing. And that's behind the scenes. That's behind the feed. And that's where actual deals are made and, and, you know, opportunities are created. Yeah. And then what about the role of, of technology and particularly the role of AI now, because uh, I know this thing started a while back and um, you remember the early days in LinkedIn, you suddenly got uh, of AI and you suddenly got all these like fake, fake personas popping up yeah. that you weren't real. And then, but how are you, how are you leveraging AI and what is the good stuff you can do with it, AI and other technology to, to really enhance the, the, uh, the outreach and the, the experience you have and what are the things that one should be avoiding? Yeah. That, and that's an excellent, excellent question. I was kind of late to the game in terms of automation and AI. We started um, really getting heavily involved and, and putting together a team uh, about a year and a half ago. And people have been doing it for many years. I think people have doing it very poorly for many years. Um, but if you use something with Sales Navigator that can help, again, to your point, John, about really going tight, you know, really making sure you know who you're talking to, it's not about reaching a billion people. It's about reaching those that actually you serve. Um, putting together a, a campaign where you're offering information, trends, um, you know, hey, we find that our clients, their, their top three concerns are this, this, and this. We do this, this, and this. That type of information that can be, you're able to reach out to people on LinkedIn, through Sales Navigator, and through email, getting public information. So, a lot of this can get a little crazy in terms of what AI can do and like what, what we have the capability of doing and what we actually do are two different things because there's yeah. a line that, that I will not cross, right? I know that I would not do that. I don't like getting um, spam phone calls or spam texts, right? But if your information is the public domain, that can happen. Mm -hmm. So you want to avoid things like that most definitely. And, and what you want to do is have a conversation with the type of person that like we're having right now. You know, yeah. if, if you were, if you were to come to me and say, I really need help with LinkedIn, I don't, I just don't know. I would say, well, tell me a little bit about what you do. Who are the people that you reach out to? Do you work geographically? What are the sizes of the companies? What problems do you really solve? How do you work? What does your business model look like? All those things need to come together to then create lists and then create campaign wording. And then what we also do is assess the data, which is unbelievably powerful. And that's the part to me that really sold me. Like, if I don't do this, I will be light years behind someone who is because mm -hmm. it able, it, it, it enables you to see, and we've been working with clients a lot, like over the past six months or so, um, businesses that used to do well over in this segment. And now that segment's drying up. Okay. Well, we better pivot and we better take a look at what else is out there and we can run a test campaign and see. Are we, are we getting the engagement? Are we, how many leads are we getting? What kind of feedback are we getting? So it really is something that is a, a broader type of approach. You don't just flip a switch and run a campaign. You do a lot of backend work, make sure that you're delivering what you, what, what you think is good. And then the, the market's going to give you that feedback. And then you take that and build upon it. Yeah. And, 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 and part of what you're outlining there is just the, the, the patience to do it properly because I mean, we live in this, we live in what I call this shortcut culture when we're bombarded all the time with everything should be easy and instant and this. But, but what you're talking about, these things take time. 
and mm -hmm. often take a little bit longer than you would like if you're going to do it properly. And I think that's some sometimes that's a little counterintuitive to people today because they think about instant results and all the time. But if you're prepared to put in the work, the patience, the planning, and so if you, you'll get the results in the end. But when you work with people, how do you help them understand that piece, the, the, the patience piece? Because that's, that's always a tough one. Well, usually putting them in the place of the person receiving mm -hmm. the message, right? You know, how well do you respond to something that is cold, that is asking you for something? You know, we, we all like, oh, do you have a, a second for a quick call? No, I don't. I don't mm -hmm. know who you are. And I absolutely don't have a second for a quick call. Mm -hmm. um, that's ridiculous to even to even say that. You know, I, I, I tell people you really want to give this a 90 day, which is a typical marketing answer, right? Mm -hmm. You want to give this a 90 day um, uh, approach in your mind. You want to you want to say that I'm going to give this 90 days. Really, if it's done well within 30 to 45 days, you're going to be able to see you're going to be able to see what's going on. Uh, are we, are we getting a response and certain in different, certainly in different industries, it's different. I'll give you an example. We have a, we have a client in, um, SEO, uh, web page creation. Mm -hmm. We'll do that. Right. A lot of people do that. Okay. Well, let's take a look at maybe going after a sector yeah. that people don't normally go after. Well, it's taken off like wildfire, right? The services industry is very, very, so going, going tighter. So I tell people, give it 90 days. Don't do this unless you have something in your business model where you could back it up with cash, right? We need to be able to say, okay, I'm spending this much a month. I'm getting these many leads and I'm closing these many sales, right? Mm -hmm. After that 90 day period, then it really is easy to do the math. But prior to that, you really do need to take into consideration that, that, that it is a process. Something else though is momentum eventually catches up and it starts to really go like a Ferris wheel or, or anything, you know, priming a pump because you're, you're generally pulling in like 250 prospects into your network every month. Okay. Mm -hmm. So maybe three of those people want to talk to you, but you've still got that 250 and the next month you're getting another 250 and the next, so before you know it, You've got thousands of people. We have a client that, you know, their objective is to get to uh, 20,000 followers on uh, their sales page. We just broke 19,000. He's thrilled because these are exactly the people that do what he does very, very tight. But now he has all of those people in, mm -hmm. you know, following him. So there's that, that you really have to take a look at what you're building from a foundational standpoint over time is unbelievably powerful. Yeah. And I think that's a great point about the momentum thing. You know, you have to be patient, but when you get the momentum, it comes. I mean, we have our own with uh, the Sales Pop YouTube channel. It took us, it, it took a long time for us to get to 5,000 subscribers, but uh, we crossed that and now we're, we're headed towards 6,000 in like a, a tenth of the time that it took us to get from yeah. four to five, if you like. And again, it's, it's, about, it's about that momentum, but you have to have the patience and, and can maintain the quality to get there. Exactly. Exactly. And that's really with anything. And, and to your point about the fast, you know, the fast path to cash. And there were a lot of books that were written and a lot of, you know, experts in, in, in that area that unfortunately have led people down a, an unrealistic path. And a lot of people yeah. have kind of woken up to that fact. You know, I've spent thousands of dollars on content and it's done nothing. I've spent thousand dollars on ads and it's done nothing. Right. Because what you need to do is open up the door digitally and, and, and extend your hand digitally to initiate a conversation. We did really, really well during COVID because people weren't going to trade shows, mm -hmm. right? So, so we did super great during that time. We got office space. We did all kinds of stuff during, during that period. Um, but what people fail to realize, okay, we're going to go back to doing uh, trade shows. Great. Do trade shows. Why not use LinkedIn to yeah. book appointments before the trade show? Mm -hmm. Why not use LinkedIn to connect all the people that you met at the trade show to continue that communication? People don't do that. So they'll spend like 15 grand going, you know, sending their team and going to the trade show. And then that's it. They talk to people and maybe something happens, maybe not, but you're not grabbing all those people. So it, it, it turns into a marketing arm that makes everything else you do much more effective. Yeah, yeah, the back those good old days. And you come home with a bag full of uh, business cards that turn yeah. into nothing. <laughs> right, you never have time to follow up, you know. So, but but if you connect mm -hmm. with them really quickly on LinkedIn, then they're going to be seeing your content, and then you just are 
you know, that you keep on making the, the flywheel go faster. Exactly. Just before we go, uh, what give me some uh, insights or predictions you have. Where do you think LinkedIn is going? Where, what do you think? Is there anything coming down the pipe that we should be aware of? Um, you know, I, I, I think that if you are if you are really offering value and 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 you're sharing it in an in in a thoughtful way, now is the time to really gain some ground. So uh, you're not doing what everybody else is doing. Maybe you're going after a blue ocean type of thing. LinkedIn is constantly, you know, they 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 copied Clubhouse a couple of years ago, and that was going to be the great thing. And lives were going to be a great thing. And there's always these things that they run up the flagpole, mm -hmm. right? Um, but honestly, what, what LinkedIn wants is eyeballs on LinkedIn. So if you are one of those people that are contributing to that happening, the, the algorithm will bless you. So that is one of those foundational things that, that never change. Now, will there be things that happen that like, like I mentioned the, uh, newsletter? Yeah. You know, there, there will be things on the horizon. What I encourage people to do is rather than jumping on that thing, if you're a good writer and you know that your, your team can pull it together, something like a newsletter would be great for you. If you're not, then maybe video is your thing. You know, make sure it's number one, your thing. Number two, you're going to be able to do it consistently. Consistency is king on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. So in terms of, 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 of new things, um, there are the community articles that are coming out that give you the, you know, oh, I'm an expert in the whatever. You know, I, I've seen those things come and go a million times. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I would not encourage people to, to spend an inordinate amount of time uh, doing things like that. But again, if it's something that's quick, that's easy for you, and you could do it consistently, do it. But it really makes sense to do those foundational things in, in having as many of these types of conversations as you can. And that only comes from connecting with researching and inviting those, those conversations to take place. Exactly. Doing and putting in the hard yards, as we said, uh, as we would say at the beginning. Uh, well, listen, Kim, this is great. All of Kim's information will be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about you and your business. Well, we, we've been in business for seven years. There are seven of us and uh, we all work uh, remotely. I'm in, in my home today, obviously, but we do have an office where, um, where two of us get together. We're in Idaho and Colorado. We do LinkedIn exclusively that that is all that we do. So we don't do just random digital marketing and as above and beyond, um, just doing LinkedIn things is really kind of helping business owners and career professionals get their bearings so that they're spending their time on things that are going to be the most productive. I use the term lowest hanging fruit, right? So we're, we're really, really good at helping to guide people the, the fastest path to that. Um, but our webpage is linkability.us. I'm at Kim Peterson Stone on LinkedIn. Uh, I would love to connect. Uh, if anybody has any questions on anything, I'd be more than happy to have a, a chat and uh, help them get on the right track. Yeah, listen, uh, thanks again, Kim. Some fantastic advice. Remember, just like anything else, LinkedIn requires that you do it intentionally and you put some thought into it. So thank you for sharing those insights. Thank you for watching and listening. I will see you all again very soon.